Welcome to the AthleteShine.com radio podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Lachesky, and I am joined by Fred Payne, safety out of Western Carolina. How you doing, Fred? I'm doing good. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. So to start out, uh, coming out of high school, did you have a lot of schools recruiting you? Yes, sir. Uh, coming out, uh, I was a, one of the big-time athletes. I ended up breaking my elbow, and it caused me to miss a couple of my camps and everything, so it kind of dropped my rating and it took me off the radar coming out. And, well, and I've talked to many athletes and some have the same, had the same circumstance. Did that, did, and some say they, uh, you know, give them extra motivation going in. Did that give you any extra motivation going to Western Carolina that you had to prove something? Yes, sir. Um, I always had a chip on my shoulder. I always felt like I had something to prove because been been playing all my life. I mean, it's always some somebody who has an opinion that's going to doubt you. Either you're too big, too small, you're not fast enough. So I mean, I always wanted to overcome all the little things. And looking at FCS like a school like Western Carolina, I knew that my talent would be seen no matter where I went. So I, it kind of gave me the motivation to to get better no matter where I went. And what would you say attracted you most to Western Carolina? Um, I would say the atmosphere. Um, when I once I arrived on campus, it was something different. I mean, I grew up in a city, and so when I went to the mountains for the first time, just seeing the countryside and seeing the nature and everything around, just the atmosphere, of, it was something different from where I grew up. And I knew that it would be somewhere that I could focus on my talent, and my academics, to finish school and get my degree, and then use my talents and take me to the next level. And. At Western Carolina, looking at your stats, you can tell you were always around the ball. Uh, would you say this describes you perfectly as a player? Yes, sir. Um, I always had a net for the ball, even when I was a a little kid playing Pop Warner. Um, our coach was big on running to the ball, no matter how far you was. We didn't we didn't allow loafing, so that kind of put me in the mindset from early childhood up until high school through college that no matter where if you're around the ball, good things are happening. And in the earlier question you were talking about, an earlier answer you actually answered this one a little bit, talking about academics. And you, you've been named to the all-academic team a few times. And we're a single finalist for the Campbell Award, which is, uh, you know, has to do with your accolades and academics. Um, how important do you value your education? And how would you say it's helped you going forward? Um, I value it a lot because being the first male in my family to add just- to actually graduate college is a is a big accomplishment. Um, I had plenty of guys who played football who had who was getting recruited, but they didn't have the grades. So when I was younger, as a freshman coming into high school, they kind of sat me down and showed me the ropes. It was like, hey, if you want to be a great player, I mean, football is all good and all, but you got to take care of academics first. And so that's what kind of gave me the mindset of where I need to be on top of my grades just as much as. I'm big putting the same work on the football field. So if I can value those two things, then everything else is going to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. And going back to Western Carolina, uh, you've played against Virginia Tech, Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee, A&M, and South Carolina. Uh, how was it like playing against top talent, talented teams like these? And did it give you extra motivation going into those games? And how did you think you've, fared in those matchups? Um, I, I would say it did give me motivation because I felt like I belonged with those guys. So every time I stepped out into the field with those guys, I felt like I should be on the same field with them or at least at the same school with them. That's That was that was my mindset. I didn't, I didn't ever want to give a guy too much credit just because he went to the University of Alabama or he was a guy from Auburn or like a big-name school. Um, It was fun playing in those environments, getting those experiences because – it's almost like I live the dream as as far as like my NFL experience. I want to play in front of a thousand, a hundred plus thousand crowds, being in a big stadium on TV. So it's kind of like I almost live my dream. I just haven't reached that platform yet. So I mean, it it was a lot of motivation and and it was something to take in. <laughs> and other than West Carol- Western Carolina, which I would say you would say is maybe the best fans because you went there. <laughs> yes, well, sir. <laughs> what field and what fans do you think was the second best? Like when I mentioned all those teams, I was what was like the, the yeah, what was like the best environment? 
I would say um, Virginia Tech. That might that might have been the loudest stadium that we played in. I mean Alabama. I mean it was great. They had all the plasma TVs in each end zone. I mean it was it was a very nice stadium. But I think I took my hat off to Virginia Tech, man. It was it was the loudest stadium. I mean like the fans were right up on you. I mean they was trash talking. So it was it was a crazy experience. I mean you couldn't even hear guys right beside you. That's how loud it was, and it was it was a big stadium. And you were talking about those players as well. Um, could you see yourself week in, week out playing against players like that, and even better? Yes, sir. I mean, I, I love to see that because I wanna, I wanna finish out my career as one of the greats, and I wanna compete at a high level with the best of the best, and just to see where I rank against those guys. So I mean, it, it's definitely where I love to see myself. What would you say your strengths and your weaknesses are? I would say my strength is uh, I'm a great leader. I'm very smart on the back end. Um, I can fit into multiple schemes. I mean, I can play in the box. I can cover. I could I could be one of those guys who you could just you could put anywhere. I could play corner, nickel, safety, backer at times. So I mean, that, those are some of my strengths because of my versatility, and with me being a smart football player because I watch football and I know the concepts and I and I just love to learn. And I say some of my weaknesses are maybe I had a lot of drop passes. So, I mean, working on my hands, working on my eye control on certain things, don't try to see too much, you know what I'm saying? So I think I, I lack a little bit of my ball skills and a little bit of my my eye focus on when I when I see things because I want to end up doing too much and then just other than doing my job, and that can hurt me at times. And kind of going off that question, Kind of going off that question, what would you say makes a good safety? I would say making a good safety is someone who he's the quarterback of the defense, so he's he got to be a leader for one. He got to um know what's going on. He got to know the defense every one because he he is what his position say. He's the the safety, the last line of defense. So he's got to be your most versatile player on the field. I would say, I mean, he's a field general. I mean, the safeties that's that's where you where you ball and you make plays at because you're tied into the run and the pass, so you you get the best of both worlds. You mentioned you mentioned leadership and you've mentioned that a few times, um, and you seem to have a lot of confidence in yourself. And you said you're a great leader. Uh, what did you always have that, or did you have to learn that? Yeah, um, I always play with heart, and that's something that that can't be coached because I mean it's either you want to or you don't, and so it's. That that kind of allowed my leadership skills to come out and let my character show. Um, because I was always a confident guy, like you say, when I when I stepped onto the field, because the work that I put in would also be shown. So that's what gives the guys like the confidence, that swagger that people play with. And then I always been like an outspoken guy. I mean, I can have a conversation with the wall. I mean, if it could talk back to me, that's how outspoken I am. I'm not shy or anything. I can hold conversation well and. And that's something that that always been good with me. One of my great gifts. And some people l- will look at the school you went to, and will try to discredit your potential right off the bat, even though it's wrong and probably unfair. But what would you tell them? I'll tell them, man. Let's just line up and and let's compete pound for pound. I mean, it's not it's not like the size of the school. I mean, because no matter where you are, you can ball if it's D one, D two, D three, or Junior college, man, I mean, it, it's talent everywhere. It's not just on the big levels. I mean, you see guys on the big level who who's not even better as guys on the FCS level. I mean, it's so you can't you can't just judge talent just based off the school. And that's what I that's what I tell guys. I mean, you just got to go perform and, and work and be the best no matter no matter where you at because the scouts will find you if you're good enough. Yeah, and you're speaking about that. Your pro day is March 30th. Uh, what are you looking to show the scouts the most? I'm looking to show them that I can run well, man. That my that my speed is up to par with with a lot of the other guys who all the other safeties they have in front of me. I think I'm one of the top safeties in this class. But I mean, I just haven't had the same media exposure as all the other ones. But I want to showcase my my speed definitely and, and my ball skills. And what play, what player do you try to model yourself after? Uh, I love I love Sean Taylor growing up, and as far as present day, I would say Tyrant Matthew because he's one of those versatile players you can kind of put anywhere. 
So I kind of see myself similar to him. But as far as a player that I watched just growing up, man, I, I love Sean Taylor. And talking about Tyron Matthew, do you have any cool nicknames? <laughs> uh, nah, they just some people just called me Game Changer. I mean, so it kind of I had got that nickname in high school because I was a I was one of them young young guys who started as a freshman and ended up finishing out my high school career as a four year starter, three year captain, and it kind of just stuck with me because I always made plays. I like you say, I always been around the ball. So it is like every time I was around something, I made something happen. So people used to call me a game changer, but other than that, I just called me Freddie P. I mean, my my name, really. <laughs> yeah, okay, one more, one more question here. Uh, why should a team take a chance on you? I believe a, t- a team should take a chance on me because I'm one of those guys, people who don't really know about. And I think the sleeper guys are the teams. I mean, those are the guys that people fear the most because they don't know anything about them. And I think a team should take a chance on me because I'll be a great player who will come Coming up ready to work consistently on a daily basis and do my job. Fred, it sounds great. Uh, I want to thank you again for taking a little time out of your night to do this interview, and good luck on your pro day and going forward. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time as well.